The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 27th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you'd like to call but you can't, well, you can always send me an email. You can send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question and in our tiger's den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magnificent, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Roach. Welcome to The Show. Right now, we've got a mix, bit of a mixed bag out here. you got the uh, Dow off 43, the S&P down 9, the NASDAQ 100 up 80. Russell's up 8, semis are up 9, trannies are off 7. You've got gold trading out at 1824, that's off 6 bucks. Silver trading out uh, up a nickel at 2118. Lights we crude up $2.67, 110 28 to print there. Natural gas up 21 pennies in the 30 treasury is off nearly one full point, trading out at 135.04. Lead the charge dollar wise to the upside. You've got um, Solar Edge Technologies up 5% or 14 bucks and change. Anthem is up 13 and change, 3%. United Health Group 13 and a half, 2 and 7 tenths percent. Axum Therapeutics, 54% and 13 buckaroonies. To the downside, it's googly one. It's off 40 bucks, 1.7%. Booking Holdings down 25 or 1 to 3 tenths. Shopify off 15, nearly 4%. MicroStrategy down 12, that's nearly 6%. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. So where are we going to start the day? Let's go start the day with regard to the play-by-play -play and what the markets are doing. For that, we're going to go ahead and switch over and take a look at our, begin by take a look at the NQ. And what we're going to, whoa, 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 what do I do? Right here. Nope, that's not it. Give me a moment here. Sorry about that, folks. Green chair. There we go. Nope, that's not it. Hey, Stevie, get your act together, son. Get your act together. Of course, I'm referring to myself. And now what you should see, I hope you do see it. There you go. In the upper left-hand corner, you got the daily NQ chart. And then we've got the intraday signals out here. So we know that inside the NQ, price closed above the top of its uh, profile. And that's at the... Um, and I've got a couple different sets of profiles for the NQ, but this one has the top at, wish I could read it. Let's try this here. Uh, 12037. 12037, and we're trading at 12070. Now, if we take a look at the five hour time frame chart, that's what it says 300 minute. You can see that this formed a TD9 count top. Uh, earlier today, about 9 o'clock in the morning. That was the bar following bar number 9. Now you can see the oscillator and change line has changed colors. So odds favor that that line and price are going to test each other. If it's a test and a rejection, that's a bullish signal. Now price will remain neutral until price closes above today's high. That high out there would be 12.262. If price were to close below the oscillator and change line, currently printed at 11.958, that would then signal move back to 11.800 or 11.543 out there. That's on a five-hour chart. If price is going to get down there, 
then what has to happen, I go to the 30-minute time frame chart. That's your bottom left. I'll just simply expand the chart out. And what we'll see here, you've got a nice little rose momentum indicator top, which turned into a TD9 count bottom. It did that at 10 o'clock this morning, and then we saw a nice little rally. Now, that rally is just really a consolidation with inside its daily profile, and prices underneath its oscillator and change line. So if price is going to head lower, the cool thing here is you just need to take a look at the low of the day. The low of the day is 12.021. You would see price close below that. Now, that being said, that could also set up an A to B equals CD to the downside. As far as where that could take us to, well, you know, not all A to B equals CDs do one-to-one. -one. In fact, it's only about 60% that do that. But here's the one-to-one -one line. I'll take this at this stage here to put this over to where we would put the A to B equals CD pattern. And that would get us down into about the 11,959 range out there. Well, 11,959 um, is uh, really right at that green oscillator and change line on the five-hour time frame chart. Got to like how two uh, two different uh, time frames, in essence, can come up with the same pattern. So we'll watch for that again on the. Five-hour time frame chart, a test rejection is going to suggest that price will move higher. Now, there is additional resistance level that the five-hour time frame chart has got to get through, and that's at the 12,360 level. And if it can do that, then price should run up to the 12,811 area. Remember, if you were with us on Friday morning, if you're with us on Thursday, might have even been on Wednesday out there, uh, we suggested to you that we should see a two- to three-week rally. Nothing has changed anything. Things really increased out there when we took a look at Friday's price action. So is there anything else here on these charts that's worth noting out here? Nothing. I think we really kind of covered it. Uh, let's go take a look at the S&P 500, the ES Mini. Let's go see if it has similar type of chart patterns out here. I do know it had the TD9 count bottom on the 30-minute time frame chart. So that says that the low of the day is a key level to be watching. We'll let this go ahead and get populated here. And the low of the day, I wish I could give that number off the top of my head. Um, just waiting for the charts to uh, populate, and then we'll just give that to you. So the low of the day out here inside the ES Mini is at the uh, 39, 38.93.50. So if price closes below that, that's going to suggest a run to the 38.60 level. Again, a TD9 count top for the five-hour time frame chart, an oscillator and change line that changed colors. Price and that line should catch up to each other. A test of rejection says we should head higher. We will head higher, or we most certainly should head higher by week's end. I don't know where you know we're at today on a Monday on the five-hour time frame chart. We may not see that test out there until later this evening or early in the morning. Is there anything else out here to point now? We really have the same kind of price action in the ES and in the NQ out there. So we know what to look for. And to get a temp now, price takes out today's highs. That's going to negate the five-hour TD9 count top. But that's going to suggest that we head higher. And when I say head higher, inside the ES Mini, price should go target its most recent highs. Those recent highs back in the 4180-ish type area out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the uh, daily and intraday charts here for the ES Mini and the NQ. We're about to go to a breakout here, but we do have a couple of requests. One came in from Mike, and uh, Mike wanted to take a look at both Apple. And uh, let me think, I've got that here. Do we have that? Yeah. So Mike wanted to take a look. This is Mike in, uh, in Europe over here. And Mike wanted to take a look at retracement targets for Apple as well as Microsoft. So in the case of Apple out here, Mike, uh, let's wait until we come back to the break. You'll see a nice TD9 count bottom on the weekly time frame. This is telling us that Apple wants to go trade up to that oscillator and change line. That current number is 149.05. It'll change as price moves higher. Though. But on a weekly time frame, what Apple is suggesting is what I is it wants to head up to the 149.04. Retracement might have already taken place today. Not here. We'll be right back. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. 
All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. C C call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at Apple out here for Mike, who's looking for an entry point out there. The 195-minute chart, Mike, would give you an entry point around 136.62. That number is going to change. And the way that the reason I say that is you've got a nice TD9 count top that uh, formed inside the 195-minute time frame chart. Um, and this next bar here closes at, uh, well, not till 4 o'clock. Is that correct? Yeah, not till 4 o'clock. So, um, and you could get a higher high, but then that would set the TD9 count out there. Um, so that's one possible area. Uh, as I look at the intraday charts out here, it's the 30 minute and the 15 minute that also have topping patterns, both with Rhodesman to indicator signals. So if price is going to make its way all the way back to that 136 ish area, what will have to happen is you'll have to see the TD9 count breakout levels fail. And those are down at 139.85 for the 30 minute chart. 141.69 for the 15 minute chart. My weight would be more on the 30 minute time frame chart. So I'll say that 139.85 or 136 and change, uh, make it 137 or so, that would be your zone for an entry into uh, Apple out there. Not going to get much off of the daily time frame charts. So I know you also wanted to take a look at Microsoft out here. Now, in the case of Microsoft, um, yeah, let's get this. It'll take just a moment here to populate. But uh, and I was just going to go to our three panel, our daily, weekly, monthly charts. But knowing that it's the intraday charts here in Apple, um, we're going to go ahead and wait the uh, minute or so for these white background charts here to populate. Because um, I, I think that'll give us a better idea, perhaps a better idea as to where price is headed to. So on Microsoft, Microsoft on a monthly basis has held the bottom of its profile so far. That's a positive. The weekly time frame uh, formed a, a Rhodes Mintum indicator. I'm sorry, formed a buy the D point bottom. And it did that in the case of Microsoft. Well, it formed a TD9 count bottom and wave number seven. Uh, probably not the A to B equals CD now that I take a look at the weekly time frame chart. But what price has done here with these bottoms here, Mike, is run right up into its red oscillator and change line. 
price really needs to close above that to suggest that there's more of a counter trend move, which would take it at 273 or 294. But on the weekly base, with price hitting that resistance level, that says, okay, at a minimum, take a look. Where is it that price could pull back to? That could be an entry area. And that's, in essence, what Mike has asked. Well, in the case of Microsoft, the 195-minute chart has a TD9 count pattern. And that says the uh, 256.90 ish area could be all the way down to 249.51. We don't have any signal that that's what's going to unfold just yet, but that's a possibility. If we look at the 30 minute time frame chart, Mike, we see a erosion momentum indicator top, very similar to the 15 minute erosion momentum indicator top and a TD9 count. So those levels of support are what we're really watching, which are 264.11 and 264.12. So a close below two, two, two consecutive close below 264.11 on a 30-minute basis is going to suggest that your entry area, potential entry area into Microsoft is 255.80. That is a TD9 count breakout level. Now, before that happens, the 15-minute chart is going to have to close below 264.12. That's its 15-minute breakout area time frame. So I hope that helps you out. The weekly chart is suggesting that, yeah, we should see a further pullback inside of Microsoft. We don't have any kind of bottom signals on the intraday time periods out there. So it does look like a uh, further retracement is in store for Microsoft. doesn't mean this afternoon, uh, but over the course of the next uh, day, 24, 36 hours or so, seems like a likely outcome. So, Mike, thanks so much for taking the time to write in uh, and uh, being with us at uh, what is probably about uh, 722 in the evening. Uh, your time and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon we do have some questions that have come in from the tiger's den and for those we're going to go ahead and switch uh, just simply to our daily weekly and monthly time frame chart if there's something that pops up here that uh, requires us to go back to the intraday time periods we most certainly will so this one coming in from uh, bob from spokane bob wanted to take a look at ticker symbol bt AI, not BTO, Bachman Turner Overdrive, but BTAI. And if we take a look at BTAI, on a monthly basis, you're likely going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count. We know that on a TD9 count, the lows of bar eight, bar nine, the bar following nine can be the bottom of the signal. We can see that uh, on a weekly basis, what we had out here was what? A Rhodesman to indicator bottom. That was formed with a three river morning star. This suggests to us that price is going to go target the top of its weekly profile. Now, that's a new weekly profile that's formed out here. And the top of that profile is 1304. The daily time frame shows that price is trading right into the top of its daily profile. That's also got a roads momentum indicator bottom. So price is up at resistance. The resistance is 1255. We're trading at 1258. So what you need to see here for a change in trend signal would be a close above the top of that weekly profile, 13 and 4. That's what I would be watching out there. No, nothing here indicating that you should not see that. And if you do get that, then that sets up a move on the daily time frame back to the 1651 level. 1651 is where price broke down. Now, before price gets there, it's got some potential sellers at about the, uh, oops, at about the 1392 level at about the uh, 1486 area out there. But I think those are just going to be small skirmishes as BTAI uh, continues to move higher. But we have to wait for it to prove itself, and that proof is going to come with a close above 1304. So hope that helps you out, Bob, and thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Dan and from Boston, let's take a look at SGEN. So let's go uh, pull this up, see what uh, information we can glean from here. And uh, Dan, I don't recall what your question is. Let's see. Rumored to be a takeover candidate, pretty heavy call buying out there, but my eyes sees a deal that potentially doesn't happen and is a big give back. Any, okay, so as we take a look at, uh, this is a CGen Inc. out here. Now, CGen Inc. is looking pretty good. It's trading above the top of its daily, its weekly, its monthly profiles out there. Let's start with the uh, monthly profile or the monthly chart that's on the left-hand side. That confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom out here was there an a to b equal cd to downside that completed i've got to do that on a different uh screen out here so i'm just checking to see if that in fact unfolded and it may have yeah it most certainly did out here um eh, but what we don't really have what we don't really have what we don't have is the bullish reversal candle so you've got price on a monthly basis above the top of the profile Oh, I see. Okay, it's trading right into a trend line. 
So this is good. We're just going to switch screens, go back and forth out here. So I want you to be able to see what I'm seeing out here, Dan. And that is, and you may have already had this drawn in on your charts out there, but if you look at the larger term time frame, in this case here, it's the chart that's on the right, that little descending trend line. So price is trading right up into that. If CGEN can take out that level, by the way, that level this week or this month, is it about 180.32 or thereabouts? So if price takes that out, that suggests you run back up to the 192.79 area. Let's go back and take a look at. Yeah, it is a uh, it is a one three or potential of a one three five. What Larry would, um, Dan? I, I I you know although I can't speak for Larry, and I'm not a very good ventriloquist out there. But I think that what, what Larry would say to you is, yeah, this looks like a 135 pattern, but beware of that wide ranging bar. And that's the month of June. That's typically not how markets end. But yes, it's 135 and uh, pattern out there. So we get back from this uh, break. We'll finish, take a look at CGEN, S G E N. Folks, give us a call at 877 if you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at CGN, S-G-E-N is a ticker symbol out there. So I've drawn in the A to B equals CD patterns to the upside for the daily and the weekly time frames out here. Now, you've got no bearish reversal candle. That is how a, um, an A to B equals CD pattern tops out or bottoms out. Uh, so we do not have that uh, bearish reversal candle out here. Uh, looks like a hanging man. It uh, looks like two hanging men. Uh, candles out there. I do not use those as reversal signals at the completion of an A to B equals CD. They are referred to as uh, bearish um, 
uh, candlesticks out there, but I've done the work on them, and I say not a chance. You, you need something better than a uh, you need something better than a hanging man candle. What we also see out here, Dan, is prices trading above the top of bearish structured daily profile. So close above one seventy six twenty nine today is really a bullish outcome on a counter trend move now. Today, we'll also complete bar number nine of a TD9 count. So we've got competing patterns out there. We've got the A to B equals CD. You've got a TD9 count. Now, that says a TD9 count pattern should be completed tomorrow. And uh, that would then say that price would pull back to support. Now, support out here, the oscillator and change on, you don't see it on your screen, is at 164.27. So it's down towards the bottom of that daily profile, new daily profile, 165.27. It's a buck away from that. Um, but a counter trend move to the downside would find support at 172.62 in the weekly. No type of bearish reversal candle there. And that's suggesting that price wants to move to 185 out there. So you got competing patterns out here, but price is running up into that resistance on that monthly time frame while you've got a TD9 count pattern that's going to form. So it does look like it's getting ready to form a short term top. And the question is, will 172 to 176.29? hold as support. If it doesn't, then we're headed back towards that 164 level, or in this case here, the bottom of its daily profile, 165.27. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request, and we'll look forward to your next request out there. Let's go take a look at uh, Coda. Wants to look at uh, Lightsweep Crude. He'd like to go ahead and take a short position in Lightsweep Crude. So let's pull up our multi time frame set of charts for it. And uh, that, now we've got the uh, monthly time frame. So I just want to make sure we, we kind of uh, have the big picture out here and the smaller picture. The big picture says we're headed higher. And that's coming from the weekly time frame chart. That's sorry, the monthly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart put us into a pause because it generated a road momentum indicator top. Now, it did that uh, the week of June 17th. And then the very following week, what's price do? Pulls back and tests support at 104.42. So since support is held out here, the bottom of its weekly profile, Coda, what Lightsweep Crude should do, could do, is at least move up to that green oscillator and change line. That's in the 113 and change level. 115.39 is the center of its uh, slightly bearish structured profile. So the sell zone here really is between 113.41 and 120.88. 128.88 is the top of that weekly profile. On a daily time frame out here, you had wave number seven. You had a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And price pulled back and tested or got below its breakout level, 105.94. That was a one-hit wonder. That was one day. Price is back above it. So another area where price should rally to, Coda, is 112.77. That's the daily oscillator and change line. And uh, so that is a possible spot to go ahead and put on a trade. Now, I do see a new profile that's forming. Let me uh, see on my other charts if I've got that same thing. And uh, whether it's worthwhile to pull those charts up as well. There's copper. There's lightspeed crude. Let's go to this set of charts here. So, lightspeed crude. Yeah, I just want to give me a moment here, if you would. I guess you don't have a choice. So yeah, so there's a brand new profile. Let's just switch over. So. Coda, very first thing, you know, in answering your question, one possible, now is not that, well, let me, I say now is not the time to take a short, let me just, before I complete that sentence, which I've already completed, go take a look at the intraday charts to see if there's some kind of signal out there. And now that I look at the intraday charts, whether it's 30, 60, 120, 240, or the five hour time frame chart, I don't have a topping pattern out there. So we're going to go with the idea that now is too soon to uh, take a short, at least from a pattern standpoint. I can't control what's going to come out of the uh, folks over at the G7 a group of well you can complete that you, you probably know how I feel about all politicians both sides of the politicians and and basically everybody overseas as well uh, but in this case here back to light sweet crude um, technically speaking price should make its way up into that 113 area 120 112 77 is what prints on my screen out there but let me just switch back and take a look at those black background charts out here and on the black background chart, you're going to see, I'm just going to expand out, we've got the August contract. And in the August contract, there's a brand new daily profile just formed really within the past hour or so, or I certainly didn't see it earlier this morning. I don't think I saw it. So you've got a support level of 103.47. So now, and this is a bullish structured profile, Coda. 
Typically, when you close above the center, and that's where price is trading right now, the center, by the way, is 107.33. On a daily basis, typically, when you close above the center of a bullish structured profile, buyers, bulls, usually are able to run the price up to resistance. That would be the top of the profile. So now, even though I've given you 112.77 as a potential area to, sh for, to, uh, uh, to uh, short oil, if you are going to short oil, I would do it where the sellers are truly residing, and that's at the 117.01 area. At least that's that's the, my take on uh, Monday, June 27th out there. So the, are updating properly now. Uh, okay, good. Um, uh, perfect. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, we're stuck in SGEN. No, I don't know. I'm not sure what you're seeing out there, uh, dreaded uh, pirate uh, Z out there. So uh, I don't know why there was the delay. But uh, we've got the lights we crude charts there as we speak. So let me see. I think there might be a request inside the Tiger's Den. Oh, Mr. Bill says charts for crude. Wow, that's very weird. I don't know what the heck happened there. But uh, you've got them now. Let me just make sure, since we've got that message twice, let me go back to the white background charts and make sure that you see here the light sweet crude charts. And that was at 133. That was just three minutes ago. Weird. So here's the here's the uh, white background charts. Here you can see on the intraday time periods, you don't see any kind of a topping pattern. The types that we uh, look for out there, there's your 112.77 that oscillator change on. You can see up here at the 117.01, that's the top of its profile. So that becomes the so-called sell zone out there. So hope that helps you out, uh, Coda. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Um, let's see here if there's any other requests. Just checking the email lines. Doesn't look, uh, yeah, I don't have anything on the white background charts. And if you do have something inside the Tiger's Den, if you're listening to the Tiger's Den, and you should be inside the Tiger's Den, uh, please just let me know what you'd like to uh, look at out there. The reason why I say you should be a part of the Tiger's Den is because it costs you $1, Mortimer. $1 to get access to all these great individuals that are inside the Tiger's Den 24-7. Well, at least from fairly early in the morning until the uh, market close out there. And then throughout the evening as well, I know the people poke their head in there. So no other requests. Let me come back and uh, can we do Oxy? We absolutely can. So let's go take a look at Occidental Petroleum. This is for SNP. Thanks so much, uh, SNP. Let's go to our uh, daily, weekly, monthly charts out there. Make sure on the white charts we are. And now let's put in Occidental Petroleum. Go see what it is doing. OXI is the ticker symbol. That would be great if it, if it actually took OXI. What the heck? There we go. So let's take a look at Oxy Petroleum. And then he wants to take a look at DBN and FANG. Holding OK so far. So what we'll do here, these charts are going to update here. And we come back from this break. We're going to go take a look at Occidental Petroleum. Then Devon Energy. And then uh, FANG for uh, SNP inside our Tiger's Den. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, Occidental uh, Petroleum here. Give me a minute. Just uh, typing uh, something in, and I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Okay, so let's get back to the white background charts for Occidental Petroleum and see what it is communicating. Well, that didn't look great. Back. Screens. There we go. Okay. So you should be able to see, I got the three different time frames. So what we know about Occidental Petroleum out here is one on a monthly basis, got a TD9 count top. On a weekly basis, um, it doesn't have a topping pattern per se uh, just yet. It did generate a rose momentum indicator signal, but did not produce the bearish reversal candle. So right now, price is consolidating with inside its weekly profiles between 53.78 and 71.79. On the daily time frame, which did generate a rose momentum indicator top, it also generated a TD night out bottom. And now what price has done, is much like Microsoft, hasn't done it to the T, but it's gotten up to that red oscillator and change line, which is at 60.30. And so far, the high of the day out here for Occidental is at uh, 60.15, and that's really close enough. So what Occidental Petroleum may be signaling to us, now, if price closes above that level, you're off to 63.04. If you close above 63.04, you're off to 70.99. But the signal may be telling us that price is going to pull back and test support, and that would be between the range of 55.80 and 57.25. And that's what I see when we take a look at Occidental Petroleum. S&P said we can come back to Devon Energy and Fang at the, uh, towards the end of the show if we don't have any other requests. We've got uh, three right now, so let's go take a look at them. The first one is take a look at... Uh, ticker symbol HYG and HYG is I'm not mistaken is uh, one of the bond uh, funds out there a high yield corporate bond fund so as we take a look at it on a monthly time frame you're in bar number nine of a TD nine count that says on a monthly basis you should form a TD nine count bottom between this month and July if we look at the weekly time frame You've got a rose momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. No bullish reversal candle. If we did get that, that would confirm a bottom and then suggest price moves up to 76.01. You do have a TD9 count pattern on the daily time frame. Price above the oscillator and change line with inside a bullish structure daily profile. So what HYG should do is make its way up to 75.85. If it can clear 75.85, it's going to deal with that red oscillator and change line on a weekly basis at around 76.01. If it can clear that, you're off on your way to 76.54. And if it can clear 76.84, you're probably on your way to 79.24, the TD9 count breakdown area out there. So again, the confirmation or the the summary for HYG uh, monthly potential bottom signal won't get any confirmation until July on that. Weekly, no bottom confirmed at this stage here. Bullish reversal candle would do the work there, and the daily's got a confirmed bottom suggest at least to move to 75, 85. 
So I hope that helps out the individual looking for HYG. Johnny wants to take a look at uh, British Petroleum. BP is the uh, ticker symbol out there. So let's go ahead and get that uh, populated, see what we uh, find. And uh, is it British Petroleum? Is it still, is it, is BP British Petroleum? Um, here's what I do know, whether it is British Petroleum or not. The monthly time frame is going to confirm a TD9 count pattern this month. So you've got the TD9 count top in place. That would suggest to move back to 2647. On the weekly time frame, I see a consolidation. And that consolidation, we can easily draw in that uh, rectangle or that square formation out here. So that's the pattern that initially, uh, let's, where is it here? Where is it? Rectangle. So to me, I see a clear weekly consolidation pattern out there. Now, the cool thing about the consolidation pattern is whichever way you get a break of, you should get a measured move equal to or greater than the consolidation. I, I don't know which way the consolidation is going to break. I just simply see that pattern that is out there. The daily time frame says, well, I'm not ready to break to the downside because I produced a TD9 count bottom on Friday. And that suggests, because I'm back inside my daily profile, that I should at least move to the center, which is where that red oscillator and change line is. So 29.59 is the number with regard to BP and where it is headed to. So price last week got down to the bottom of the consolidation on the weekly basis. On the daily basis, it formed a TD9 count bottom. It can't bust them to the downside, should bust them to the upside. Watch 29.59. If price can close above 29.59, then you're off to 30.85. And above 30.85, you'd be off to the top of the consolidation. We're not saying it's going to the top of the consolidation. You have to take this one step at a time. That first step is going to take place at the 29.59 level. So, Johnny, thanks so much for writing in. I hope that helps you out. Glenn wants to take a look at uh, RCL. I think that's Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. Is that it, RCL, or is that, uh, or am I mistaken? Nope, I'm right. The Royal Caribbean Group out there. And uh, I, I Royal Caribbean Group out here, TD9 count top was bar number eight that identified the top. This is closed below a TD9 count bottom. It did that in the month of June. Price has broken through its TD9 count breakout level of 45.71. This suggests getting back to 30.86. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, the weekly time frame says, I beg your pardon. I have a TD9 count bottom. Uh, and uh, however, this week is the bar following bar number nine. So you could theoretically get a lower low, and that would still maintain the pattern out here. But because we've got a TD9 count bottom, what that should do is take us up to that oscillator and change line or near it because that line might fall. So the current price target is 52.75. Well, hey, folks, if price is going to get to 52.75, this is an easy peasy call here because we can see on the daily time frame what price has done is it stalled right at where the sellers are at. And the sellers are at the top of the profile. The top of the profile is 41.95. The high today is 41.90 uh 41.84. Yeah, 4184. So that's the resistance level. Royal Caribbean has got to close above 4195 to then suggest that what the weekly chart is communicating to us, Glenn, is that it wants to make a move to 5275. Now, if next week, not this week, if next week price takes out the lows from uh, two weeks ago, that would, of course, be three weeks ago, or I'll give you what those lows are. Those lows would be, or that low would be 3410. Not this week. But next week, your price would be close below 34.10. Well, one that suggests moving back to the 30.86 level. But you've got that big wide-ranging bar out here on a monthly basis. It's got some pretty decent volume. So if price did close below 30.86, you'd be looking at a run down to $19.25 out there. So you got the nice bottom on the weekly. You've got the nice bottom. That was a TD9 count, a roads meant to indicator bottom signal on the uh, daily time frame out there. And now price has got to take out the resistance zone. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Glenn. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. That gives us a chance here to go take a look at Devon Energy. Really just kind of an update since we looked at that, I believe, on Thursday or Friday of last week for SNP. So let's get Devon Energy to populate on our screen, see what we see out here. And we're just going back to the daily time frame, which did form a TD9 count bottom. It did that on Friday. 
uh, prices above uh, Friday's high. Price should be making its way back to the 63.27 level. 63.27 is the current oscillator and change line. Let's go take a look and see what Fang is doing out here. Again, just an update out here. Uh, Fang is uh, printing right now at, come on, drum roll. It's printing at 124.15. This too formed a TD9 count bottom for its daily time frame. Held the week or the monthly oscillator and change line, which uh, puts it into neutral territory right now. Price should go target the 134.20 level. So SNP, I hope that helps you out. Thanks for, for taking the time. Well, Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few moments. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to take a uh, keep an eye on the, uh, let's see where there are other requests out here. Uh, nope, looks like we're good. So we're going to certainly keep an eye on the spot follow tilt index, which is trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day is currently printing at 2801. The VIX is currently printing at 2745. Odds favor, move back the 2526-ish area. As long as the spot follow tilt index is below its 50-day exponential moving average, which is where it's at right now, then it's uh, it uh, it suggests that the S&P should move sideways, too higher. Yeah, we're pulling back just a bit today, but that's really not that big of a deal out there. Um, if I take a look at the advanced decline oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange, 
currently printed out at 124.64. So the question is, does this get to plus 150 or above 150, or is this a my is this a plus 150 failure? And I don't know the answer to that question, but right now things are pointed to the upside. We should see in, uh, uh, when I say uh, market breadth looks uh, pretty strong inside the New York Stock Exchange. So we should continue to see higher price out there. And uh, if we take a look at just from a seasonal standpoint, now this does not take into account the midterm elections, but as you can see in the red line is where we're at right now a few days ago is typically when we see a bottom inside the S&P 500 turns out that that's in fact what we saw out there so seasonally and this suggests that price should move up into the uh, middle of uh, July out here around the 15th time frame but we are in this is the 72 year cycle pattern out here but we are inside of a uh, we are inside of a uh, midterm election cycle and so we can also take a look and see what the midterm election cycle looks like and that would be like this and that really suggests that we have a market that's trending upward but very choppy and I believe that these are most likely the conditions that we are in out here, a very choppy to uh, move to a higher type move out there. We should at a minimum, though, we're in the cycle where we should see a higher close on Friday or a close Friday above last Friday's close out there. That's the way that I'll put it. So, folks, stay tuned. You've got two more great hours lined up for you. Your favorite polar bear, David White, Tom O'Brien will take us on home. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Terrific Tuesday. You have a magnificent Monday. Thanks again for joining us.